How did Samuel treat Saul when Saul came to him at Ramah? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of 1 Samuel on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 15 to 27. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 15. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 1 Samuel chapter 9, beginning at verse 15. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry has come to me. So when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, There he is, the man of whom I spoke to you. This one shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near uh, to Samuel in the gate and said, Please tell me, where is the seer's house? Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, and you shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let you go, and will tell you all that is in your heart. But as for your donkeys that were lost three days ago, do not be anxious about them, for they have been found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on you and all your father's house? And Saul answered and said, Am I not a Benjamin of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Why then do you speak like this to me? Now Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the, into the hall and sat them in the place of honor among those who were invited. There were about thirty persons. And Samuel said to the cook, Bring the portion which I gave you, of which I said to you, set it apart. So the cook took up the thigh with its upper part and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Here it is, what was kept back. It was set apart for you. Eat, for until this time it has been kept for you since I said I invited the people. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. When they had come down from the high place into the city, Samuel spoke with Saul on the top of the house. They arose early, and it was about the dawning of the day that Samuel called to Saul on the top of the house, saying, Get up that I may send you on your way. And Saul arose, and both of them went outside, he and Samuel. As they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant to go on ahead of us. And he went on. But you, sta you stand here a while, that I may announce to you the word of God. In chapter 8, Israel wanted a king. In the beginning of chapter 9, we're introduced to who that king would be though as of yet that has not been made known. Saul was a tall, handsome man, kingly material if you were just observing outward appearance. He was out looking for his father's donkeys when he came to Ramah. There his servant convinced him to seek out the seer or a prophet who lived there. Perhaps this prophet could tell them where to look. Coming now to today's reading, we get a little bit of the backstory. For while Saul was approaching Samuel, Samuel had already been warned by God that Saul was coming, though not by name. In fact, we can pretty confidently say that it was by God's providence that Saul was sent out to look for the lost donkeys and that he came to Ramah to see Samuel. Samuel had been told that this man would be of the tribe of Benjamin and would be selected to be the king who would reign over Israel and deliver them out of the hands of the Philistines. Now, at first glance, this might seem confusing, for at the end of chapter 7, the Philistines had been subdued and were subdued all the days of Samuel. But if you recall, we said that, there, that, we said there that being subdued didn't mean the Philistines were destroyed, nor did it mean that they didn't attempt to take Israel again. They were subdued from their 40 years of affliction of Israel back in chapter 7. About 22 years had passed between chapter 7 and 8, and it is obvious that the Philistines were at it again. But God would continue to subdue the Philistines in the, in the days of Samuel, just as this book said. In this case, in chapter 9, we would use, he would use Saul. Coming to verse 17, Samuel sees Saul, and the Lord identifies Saul as the one whom was spoken of. Saul asks Samuel where the seer is, to which Samuel replies that he's the seer. 
Samuel invites Saul to accompany him to the high place, for he would dine with Samuel that day, meaning he would also worship God at the altar there. Tomorrow, Samuel would tell Saul all that is on his heart, but in order to assure Saul that he could remain, Samuel tells Saul that the lost donkeys had been found. Saul hadn't even told Samuel about the donkeys, yet Samuel says that they had been found already. This would show Saul that Samuel is indeed a prophet of God, able to tell him the things he needed to know. Samuel continues to heap praises on Saul and his household. This made Saul a little uncomfortable, for he tells Samuel that he was a Benjamite of the smallest tribe in Israel, and his family is the least of all the families in Benjamin. Now, earlier in the chapter, we saw we said that Saul's family was an affluent family due to his lineage, but that didn't mean that he was the greatest family in Benjamin. Being the least of the families of Benjamin could also mean that his family was the smallest, so we must also consider that too. Whatever the case, Saul thought that such praise surely shouldn't be reserved for him. Now before moving on, if you remember back to the census in Numbers 26, we see that four tribes actually had fewer numbers than Benjamin, Ephraim, Gad, Simeon, and Reuben. How could Saul say that Benjamin is the smallest tribe in Israel? For that, we need to remember the events of Judges 20 and 21. We don't have time to reread them again, so perhaps you can do that on your own time. If you do, you'll know that because of their wicked actions, the tribe of Benjamin almost went extinct. Only 600 men survived. We don't know specifically when this event took place, but it was closer to the time of the conquest of Canaan than at the end of the Judges, because Phinehas, Israel's third high priest, is mentioned as still being alive. So great was this devastation of the tribe of Benjamin that about 250 years later, Benjamin was still the smallest tribe in Israel. Thus, thus knowing what has happened in previous books can help us understand passages like this one. Samuel, though, was going to have to show Saul what was in store for him. Typically, on the high places, there would be a structure where the priests and others could eat. After Samuel had blessed the sacrifice and it was offered by one of the priests, Samuel made sure that Saul and his servant received the preeminent spot at this sacrificial meal. The best part of the sacrifice that could be eaten by the people was reserved for Saul. In fact, Samuel told Saul that it had been reserved beforehand, for they knew he was coming. This was quite an honor for Saul, one that he was not used to. But if Saul thought that was great, what Samuel would reveal to him the next day would be even better. At the dawning of the next day, then, Samuel called for Saul and told him to send his servant on his way back home. As for him, he was to remain for a while so that Samuel could announce to him the word of God. We'll find out exactly what was said, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. We will be taking our year-end break and will return, the Lord willing, on Monday, January 9th, 2023. When we return, we'll take up with 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1 to 16. From the entire East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, we thank you for watching the podcast this year, and we wish you a safe and joyful holiday season, as well as a happy new year. We hope that you will come back to watch in 2023, when we will continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.